VW's Golf, a favourite for over four decades. Recently, Volkswagen decided they'd do something a little bit different and go back to basics. So they released the Golf Original. So what's different about the Golf Original? For a start, it's only got three doors instead of five. The first time we've seen that in a Golf in a very long time. It's still got a lusty 169 kilowatt engine uh, with 350 newton meters. The torque is delivered from way down low, only 1500 uh, revs. Pretty impressive. The options are impressive too. You can get that digital screen that I like so much with VW, and we've shown that in Arteon and many other Volkswagens. What I really like about this is it comes in a six-speed manual, something we haven't seen in a Golf GTI for a very long time. You can also get the DSG, which is also a six-speed, and it is just as good. Mind you, I prefer the six-speed manual. The original Golf GTI had tartan upholstery, and this one's no different. But of course, there's a lot of things that are missing. The drive raids are missing, for example. There's no lane watch or, or blind spot monitoring but you know, I don't miss it. It's nice to actually drive a car for a change. Of course, being a three door, it means access to the rear is slightly limited, but for, a, for us, there's only two of us and it's perfect. I'd probably be inclined to get a two door anyway. The doors are nice and long and it allows you to get plenty of access. There's plenty of space in here. With the seat set like this, I can easily get the uh, golf ball gear stick and the steering wheel, which is of course adjustable for height and reach, so I can get this exactly where I want it. That's set about right for me. You can easily access the back seats like so. It'll slide forward and then you just slide it back. The, the back stays locked until the seat is back where it was originally. Brilliant. Under here, of course the reverse camera also lives, but this is also the door handle. Watch this. How easy is that? The back seats go down in one easy motion with a button either side of the, uh, on either side of the cabin. And the floor is almost flat. This is a really useful, usable, everyday commuter. And it's fun on the road. Of course, the drive is what a Golf is all about. Any Golf, but in particular a GTI. The little Golf Ball gear knob, I think, is just a hoot. And this is really easy to get into reverse, too. You push it down, and then you go across and up. Some cars, you've got to do all that fancy kind of jiggling with the gear knob, which just annoys me no end. This car is equipped with brake hold, which means when you apply the foot brake and come to a complete stop, the car will take over for you. You can then take your foot off the clutch and off the, we'll put it into neutral first, take your foot off the clutch and off the brake and it will stay there. And it uses ABS to hold the brake until such times as uh, you're ready to go again, which is just brilliant very very easy to use. I didn't like it at first um, but now I you know, find it really hard to live without. It's got electric parking brake obviously and up here on the dash it's green when the parking brake when the it's green when the brake hold is active like it is now and then if you apply the parking brake it actually activates and goes red. All of these systems will let go if you've got your seat belt on automatically. One thing I didn't mention when we were over at McMahon's Point was the fabulous Seville wheels. They just look great. They Honestly, they look fantastic. 18-inch wheels and they really suit this car, that multi-spoke design. Now you can see this has some pickup. That 350 newton meters of torque is the important bit and as I said available from 1500 revs. But it really makes the car feel lusty and alive. I'm going to put it in sports mode and we'll see how that makes a difference. At this speed you won't notice anything but once you get going and especially in corners 
you feel light and alive and the whole chassis feels urgent and intense. That truck is literally up my clacker. So with that low down torque, you can do quick sprints. Now you can see how easy these gears are to change. And that's a, a sign of a, a beautifully matched six speed transmission to a lovely clutch and a beautiful light lusty engine. One thing I do want to mention though is the ride is incredibly good. I'm just going to pop that back into, you can see them going over here on the, and you can also select those on the touch screen too. Uh, normal mode makes the, the, the drive much less urgent and much less frantic, not though it's particularly frantic in sports mode. Up here in the center of the dash, I've used my uh, scroll bar to come across to a, a digital speedo, which I find particularly useful. Obviously, that's something you wouldn't have to do if this was the full digital dash, which is the 12, 12 inch uh, LCD screen. Fuel consumption is pretty good. We've done around 100 kilometers so far uh, using about a quarter of a tank. Now you can see now that we're on the freeway, but uh, that was mainly around the city. So considering the performance of this car, that's a pretty good figure. The surfacing of the Mark 7 Golf is brilliant. It's, it, it just feels lovely to touch and everything looks classy. And the center stack is just so beautifully designed. It is so simple and crisp and easy to use and everything is in easy reach. I don't have to reach out of my seat for, for anything. There's a well-placed footrest. All the pedals are well-placed. The steering wheel's well-placed. The buttons, even the plastic on the buttons on the steering wheel is nice quality. I'm going to give Golf GTI Original 9 out of 10. Part of that at least is because it's my sentimental favorite, but the other part is it, it lives up to its promises. Golf GTI does what it says on the box. And at under $40,000 drive away, not only is it a great drive, but it's an excellent price. So that's all from us this week. Don't forget, all importantly, subscribe.